Ladies and gentlemen, I would have a cool intro, but this is not an official podcast. My name is M. Brown, a.k.a. Conscience. I'm here with my boy, Wayne Classic, and we're just going to be shooting from the hip tonight on two subjects. The first one is going to be what makes a song great, and we are just going to kind of go through the different things that we think about spitball back and forth on it and just share with you guys what we feel makes a great song. Now this is a subjective thing in a sense, but I think there are in many cases some underlying objective truths that whether they need to be contextualized or not do apply and are important um, to most people in terms of what makes a song great. We don't want to talk about the extremes. We want to unpack the details and kind of find a happy middle ground of just really getting a full sense of how we personally feel about this conversation. Before we get into it, though, Wayne, give the people a short little Instagram bio uh, of who you are, what you do, where you're from, whatever might be important. Yeah, um... Appreciate you for having me on again, Conscience. Um, my name is Wayne Classic. I am a producer and artist um, based out of Phoenix, Arizona. And I get to make really cool music with uh, really cool people. That honors God. Amen. That's it. Amen. That's a nice, short and sweet and dope intro. Um yeah. Me and Wayne have been rocking with each other for a while. It's crazy to think that we basically met through Gospel Lee. Yeah. Yep. That was so long ago. I see him now with a wife and a child. He might have two children. I'm not sure. Two Does children. Two, two, two children. Daughters. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. dang, I remember back when I used to go see him and I heard about Wayne because he used to be like, yeah, and the producer's name's Wayne Classic. He killed this. <laughs> <laughs> you know how he's, he always gets on his yeah, pastoral he's, he's game. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, yo, dude is nice. Yeah. Um, all God's doing as far as how that orchestrated into like things like G and G and you and the Lord preserving and keeping some of G and G here, and then us meeting more people like Warren and different collectives and mash yeah. unit and people from tucson and just and then people who would jump in and out and um it really is a kind of camaraderie where it's like everybody's going hard xavier sorrow those kind of guys everyone's kind of in their own little pockets in arizona doing their thing but yeah. that was a, a sweet moment where we all kind of found out like oh shoot there's more people here yeah um and they're actually dope it's not just like oh i, I want to stay in my little room and make music. It's like, oh, these are people who I might want to work with and consider my peers and do That's all bad. that fun stuff. So, yeah, um, so me and Wayne have been chopping back and forth about music, making music together. I mean, we got the Greater Than EP that we did together. He produced and sang, sang rap on it. Um, he does music himself. He's worked with a lot of people in the CHH space. Um, I know me personally, I've been making music since I was 13. I'm 34 now, almost like a 20 year run of music, which is like scary to think. <laughs> I've worn all the hats from the production to the recording, to the mixing and mastering, um, analog gear, digital gear. Um, I, I have an art background with drawing, painting, photography, ceramics. That's my school background and eventually into education. So I've been listening to music. I've been a music lover of many different genres. My mom had me on a bunch of stuff I never heard of when I was a kid from Europe in the dance scene. And so I have a real well-rounded, um, I, I've been listening to music for a long dang time. And, um, and in, in the CHH space, I've, I've, I work with most of the artists who you listen to. Uh, in the space, um, well over you know anywhere between two to three hundred records a year I put out. That's not including my own music, so I get to hear all qualities of music, all kinds of music, and I know Wayne, being on the producer side and just being a fan of the space, has heard his share of music. Now, without further ado, five minutes in, let's talk about the elements of what makes a great song. 
Is there anything, Wayne, that stands out right away as like, when I think great music, I think this? Yeah, so, okay, well, two things hit me. One, the very, very first thing, just to go with your uh, your question, would be relatability. So something that's relatable uh, to the listener. Um, the second thing is, I I grew up on the radio. So I grew up listening to Top 40. I grew up listening to, it's funny, I grew up listening to Top 40, but then I also grew up listening to reggae. And I grew up listening to like, like the smooth jazz station. So I've just been a radio. Smooth head. jazz. 95.5 yeah. <laughs> K-Y-O-T. The Coyote. <laughs> the Coyote. <laughs> Smoothest sounds on the radio. Smoothest yeah. <laughs> sound. Now we've got the latest collection of Thelonious Monk. Yeah, for real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I mean, I, I, definitely, um, I definitely have a bias towards music that brings people together a bias towards music that is popular um that we hear constantly we don't really have a choice but to like it because it plays every hour on the hour sure. um yeah and so i i definitely think that that has formulated my musical taste in in dis in determining what uh, a song is what 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 makes a song great which i don't think is necessarily bad per se because um i think a lot of other people have um formulated their taste in music the same way so now i want to kind of push back on you a little bit on relatability sure. ask mm -hmm. you a couple of questions because i think relatability is oftentimes slept on because it sometimes we might think it means i oh i went through that or oh i know what that is and and that definitely is relatability but here's a question can somebody listen to some music that contextually they don't identify with at all, but could somehow be relatable to them. That's very true. And they could also, so you, agree, you, you would say yes to that. Yes, I would. Mm -hmm. And, and how so, um, you know, I can't necessarily think of an example off the top, but I, I, I can see a world where, someone may be like, man, that's really relatable, but it may not necessarily be a hit. <laughs> like somebody might make a song called My Job Sucks. I'm so bad, you know? Gotcha. And it sounds like two cats fighting in an alley, you know, but it's like, yeah, my, do my job does suck so bad. So I, I, I can relate to that. So yeah, I could see how that, that may not be the ultimate criteria um, and maybe just, just a piece of, of the the puzzle of what makes a song great for sure i i think two aspects of relatability that i'm thinking of to to piggyback off that is like and we see this all the time there might be like an international hit that you don't understand any of the words to at all you don't even know what the song's right. about um yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. but you're like there's something about it that's appealing to you that mm -hmm. makes you feel a certain way that you feel when you hear your american music or vice versa and they're, it's relatable in the sense of like um, the sonics or mm. the feeling of the music. Um, so it's like, it doesn't have to always be like maybe contextual relatability. Sometimes it can be musical relatability. Um, sometimes it might just be like an emotional energy that resonates with you where it's like some, guy, some lady might be singing like a dark lyric and doesn't even matter like what she's talking about is struck a chord in you that made you think about something. And so there's mm -hmm. like a connection point where it's like a transfer of energy. Um, and then there might just be like a relatability of maybe um, just like the craftsmanship or like the format of it. Like mm -hmm. it might just be in a format similar to something you've heard before. And so there's some type of like, okay, well, I know what comes next. It's going to be the hi hat, then the snare, mm -hmm. um, and and maybe that stuff culminates. Like maybe the amount of things that you relate to or connect with in the song um, is what ultimately like continues to form like a bond. Like they're all like threads that are building a relationship with you. And I think another word for like relatability could just be like connection. Mm. Um, 
Yeah. M- great music connects with us in different ways. Mm. And the depth of that connection is based off of various things that are going on in the music that are connecting with you on many levels. And so um, what are some things? Okay, so relatability is a key criteria for you. Also, you said um, kind of like the pop culture of all of the stuff that we've regularly heard on radio and on TV over the years, um, pop of all sorts, I guess. Um, those kind of create uh, a feeling and a musical standard that you kind of are looking for as well in the mm-hmm. music, like playability, um, replay value. Um, mm-hmm. let's, let's talk a little bit about the structure, like the actual song. Now, the song is okay. made up of music. Most And what we're talking about today is like, say, for instance, in hip hop, we have music, you know, production, instrumentation. We have vocals and mm-hmm. then we have um, all of that jammed together into this, you know, um, this, uh, you know, sausage, egg and cheese McGriddle that we call music. Mm-hmm. Um, so what are some of the elements in the song that like you're drawn to uh, when you think about some great music that you've heard? Yeah, so um, definitely, I would definitely say less is more for sure um, when it comes to like composition. So the songs that are truly great, there's like an elegance, meaning it's, it's doing something amazing with like, you can almost hear the distinct sounds. Yeah, so I mean, a con- uh, contagious melody, something that's singable, some something that will get stuck in your head. You can hum it. You, um, uh, I like I said before, less is more. Um, yeah, uh, that, that to me, that's that's the biggest thing. It you shouldn't have to you shouldn't have to work to to take in the music it should be something where it's almost like low-key like intrusive (laughs) like it's it's almost like forced into your brain you know it's something that makes you go man i I gotta listen to something else because this song is stuck in my head you know Mm -hmm. um yeah i have a i have a great like memory growing up we used to break dance and we used to do graffiti and we used to just like sit in a room and we would be drawing and stuff and I remember my homie Nemo used to always throw on this thing called mushroom jazz. Mm. And it was a bunch of just like instrumental jazzy music over like old break beats. But then it had like a European and French and all this stuff type of influence with it where it was just beats. And we used to just love like we used to get so inspired by vocalist music. I mm. mean, this there were there weren't even vocal samples. It was just like stuff that you would normally hear somebody either break dancing to or just like kind of that jazzy club vibe or or like that french carousel or horse ride you know Mm. some elegant type of music and um man we we couldn't wait to come home from school turn some of that on and just get to drawing and it used to just inspire some crazy artwork And, and that leads me to Great music doesn't always have to have the same things and everything. Yeah. Um, great music serves different purposes. Um, and so we can never think of like, you know, what a U2 song is doing on pop radio um, can have the same type of impact as a mushroom jazz song to a kid who's drawing a picture because both are serving that audience for their intended use yeah. profoundly in each of those different lanes. So maybe the guy might not want to be listening to a U2 song while he's drawing some graffiti. Maybe, maybe, maybe so, maybe not. But um, music serves different purposes. And so um, I think I think one great thing about great music is like it's diverse. It serves different purposes. Um, it could be mood music. It could be getting a task done music, like working out or cleaning a house 
or even like music to think deep. Like sometimes I'll throw on some classical just to like take my brain out of the United States of America. Like, okay, I need to go back into the 1700s with, 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 and hear something that only people from this era could have heard because that will take me out of normal thinking. Um, then I have music that I just want to skateboard to. Then I have music where I just want to hear a woman sing. Mm. Then I got music that I wanted. I want to just hear a woman sing elegant, light, minimal music. I want to hear minimal music. I want to hear compositional stuff. Like there's just so many elements to great music, but I love diverse music that just has the ability to meet me in different spaces of my life. And I think, um, we're definitely gonna have to make a part two to this, but sure. the thing I would add to the conversation just very briefly is like music serves. Um, it, it, it has the ability to connect with you where you are and serve you in that moment with some type of feeling. And we look for different feelings in music. You know, we want to feel mm -hmm. happy. We want to feel sad. We want to feel encouraged. We want to feel bright. We want to feel airy, weightless. We want to feel heavy. Energized. We want to feel motivated, energized. Mm -hmm. um, we want to feel stimulated. All of these yeah. things. So, so music serves in those categories. And so great music serves to those different emotional needs. And sometimes it doesn't even have to be intentional. Like the, the artist might not be like, this is going to be the song I make for them when they're hitting the gym and they're benching 400 pounds. Mm -hmm. It might be something really real that they went to, but the musical choice that they chose to put together wound up having multiple services that mm -hmm. they weren't even aware of. And that's powerful music as well. So, so music serves, um, it has impact to like an emotional energy and, um, and, and, and it can also take you on a journey. It speaks to you in some way. Um, so it's tapping into those emotions. It's taking you on a journey. Um, it's serving a purpose. Um, those are definitely elements that can make a great song. What were you going to say? I was going to say one example of how I feel. I mean, other people might not think this is weird. But I one example of how I feel like I use music that out of place is I love listening to lo-fi when I go hiking because I, Oh, you're saying me. like, you're saying it lo-fi wouldn't typically be something you'd expect to hear you listening to on a hike. Yeah. Or any kind of physical activity because you know, you kind of want something more upbeat so that you mm. can, you can, you can move and, you know, but right. I like to listen to it cause I, I feel like it helps um, me control my heart rate. Oh, so, yeah, so it's like I'm going hard and my heart's high going intensity crazy. but a calm mind type of thing. Yeah, exactly. So it helps me regulate my heart rate, yeah. Yep. That's really interesting. This is totally like off topic, but I think there's like a weird connection. Last night I was sitting in my jacuzzi and I was doing like this really intense stretch, but mm -hmm. I was only doing it because I was in the jacuzzi and yeah. the water was so hot you're not in as much pain when you're doing it. Right. So I think that's kind of like a similar thing where it's like yeah. you're trying to find the balance of like, okay, during exercise, you're tempted to feel like pain and stress and anxiety. So mm -hmm. the music is kind of doing a psychological thing for you in that moment where you're regulating your stress level by ignoring the pain, which therefore creates a higher toler tolerance and makes you think of it differently because mm -hmm. it's it's taking your focus somewhere else. That's really interesting. Man, we could really I've got a couple of things written down here, but we'll do our part 2 maybe like next week or something. Yeah. Guys, we're talking about what makes a song great and we're just spitballing back and forth. I love this conversation because one it can just inspire somebody to think about music differently and maybe look for new things in music that they didn't normally look through. A lot of times we just kind of throw the music on and we like what we like and that's cool. But I think when you can like break it down, it's like that was what I was feeling. Wow, that's cool. Or dang, I, I'm going to go listen back to the music with that new perspective and it's going to heighten my musical palette. It's almost like l wine lovers, you know, when they sip a bottle of wine, they sip it and the guys are like, ah, 
ah, ah, and they get all these thoughts and memories and reminiscence and all this, and it leads to a great conversation, but it also leads to like a great pursuit of wine tasting when they go back out because they're further informed and inspired. And same yeah. with the music, like we want to expand our musical palette. So we're going to come back next week, hit you guys with another, um, uh, we're going to expand on this some more as far as what makes great music. Guys, what makes a great song to you? It doesn't have to be complex. It can be very simple. Let us know in the comments. Um, let us know if you learned anything new or maybe you didn't listen to music the way we kind of broke it down or whatever. We want to hear what you guys think about it. Um, and uh, yeah, Wayne, we will move on to the uh, the next video. We're, we're definitely going to have you back because this is cool and people have been requesting it. So um, I want to keep the conversation going and maybe we'll even bring somebody else in as well. Let's do it. All right. Peace.